Hello. My name is Jackie Shapin, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I live in Los Angeles, and I help see people all over California. My specialties include treating OCD, eating disorders, helping with life transitions and anxiety. And I've been here a couple times. Uh, last time I was here with someone today, I'm going to be here by myself. So I'm going to do my best to support all of you and answer as many questions as I can to the best of my ability. And I'm so happy to have all of you here. And I also want to um, just point out the bravery that you have even being here, because I know even being here and talking about OCD and asking about OCD and reading other people talk about OCD can be difficult. And so I already wanna applaud you for any of you that are feeling discomfort right now and are choosing to lean into it. Um, all right. Wes, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Just look. Sorry, some questions are just starting to come in. All right, Omar says, how to deal with existential OCD? Sometimes I don't have a thought or idea, but seem to be stuck on a phobia of existence. So I'd like to hear a little bit more from you, um, just so I can understand what you mean by phobia of existence. However, I think a response that kind of will always fit with any theme for OCD is trying to accept that fear and understand that you won't be able to compulse your way out of it by trying to figure out something, trying to get yourself to change your feeling about the dread. So leaning into it and working on acceptance of that dread. Acceptance doesn't mean you like it or you want it at all. Acceptance just means that you are taking in things how they are, you're, you're basically facing reality instead of trying to make something how you want it to be. So really trying not to figure it out. Let's see, let's see, Chelsea. Hi, my POCD has gotten better and my themes started switching. Then POCD came back and I did an exposure and read that some people question themselves or feel shame or guilt and that scared me. All right, so it sounds like you worked on, I'm guessing pedophilia OCD and got better and then switched and then came back. A lot of feelings are gonna come up with themes, especially themes that people consider taboo themes and pedophilia OCD is one of those. So unfortunately, excuse me, it is common that you may feel shame or guilt and you may feel also fear. Those feelings don't mean that you aren't gonna be able to find freedom or that you're not gonna to continue to be able to do exposures. You might have to feel shame, guilt, and fear and expose yourself anyway and continue to do the work. And I really encourage you to do that because it sounds like you did some work and it got better. And unfortunately these things pop up and down all the time. And so it sounds like you know what to do and to remember that you can handle feelings. You can handle feelings of shame and guilt, whether they're valid or not. Uh, you also said, I read someone inst instantly out of nowhere became a P and that triggered me. Um, again, I think you're saying pedophile. Um, it could be exposure for you to read stories about pedophiles. I think it would be helpful if you were in treatment and so that you were getting support on how to properly treat your OCD. And if that is something you're doing, then I think, you know, you can talk about if continuing to see topics that are triggering to you are helpful for you. If it's random and spontaneous and it's not something you're prepared for, it's going to be a lot harder to know how to respond in with kind of the ERP mindset than if it's planned expo exposures. Now, it can totally work, but I think it's important you know what you're doing when you're doing exposures um, and that you are kind of a little bit prepared for it especially depending on where you're at. So if this sounds confusing, please, please get support from OCD or someone that is specialized in OCD so they can help you. 
All right. New York girl, sorry, I'm assuming New York. NY girl too. I'm here for my 10 year old daughter who has pure OCD, mostly dealing with nighttime rituals. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And I hope that, you know, some of these responses can help you. Um, in case you were curious, there is an OCD um, kids camp that is actually this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And I believe it is run through the IOCDF. And in case you didn't know, that might be really great for you and your daughter because it's, it's for kids and parents, but welcome. Do you have any clients or know of anyone that has a successful business that deals with just right OCD? Not sure I understand the question. Oh, do I have any clients that struggle with OCD and are successful? Yes, 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 yes. Do not let OCD take you away from what you want in life and what your ambition and your goals are. You can have OCD, any theme, and still have a successful and fulfilling life and career. So yes. All right. I just don't understand that what I, I just don't understand what I should be doing. I am from India and I always have this fear that if I don't follow this ritual, then something bad will happen. Or if I touch it with my dirty hands. Thank you for sharing this example. It's a great example and not even an example, but something real that you and other people struggle with. You're not alone. So I'm glad you found this and hopefully you are able to um, join no CD and get support through that. So exposure response prevention is the gold standard of care for treating OCD and ERP, that type of treatment would say that you want to create exposures that face your fear. It's really important to know you are not doing exposures to prove something. You're not doing, sorry, I realize my face is covered. You're not doing exposures to prove something. You're not doing it to prove like nothing bad will happen. You're doing exposures to show yourself that you can face the unknown and take the risk of the unknown and do things and sit with whatever happens, whether something bad happens or not. So I encourage you, if you are in a place to do ERP, that you try to switch up the ritual or you change it or you do the ritual wrong and then sit with this discomfort of knowing maybe something bad will happen. And you will notice as time goes on that that strong discomfort, it may be there for a while, but it will lessen because feelings, feelings pass and the degree of anxiety we feel from things do not stay at the same place forever. It's just impossible. Nicole, hello. Why do intrusive thoughts feel so real? Oh, I know. I wish I could explain this, it, you know, way better for you. Um, but intrusive thoughts feel so real because we are humans and we have emotions. And a lot of times our intrusive thoughts are attacking what you value the most. And so that's also why they feel so awful. If you didn't care about whatever this this thought was, you wouldn't have a reaction, but you do care and your OCD is trying to freak you out. And they feel real because it's so, it's so hard to remember that thoughts are not facts when it's literally a thought that's in your mind. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I guess I'm just validating that thoughts feel so real because they're in your mind. And so it's, it's wild to understand, even though it's true that thoughts are just not facts and we could have thoughts entering our mind that literally have nothing to do with anything. And I think there's a lot of freedom in understanding that just because we have thoughts doesn't mean there is a purpose for them. Ooh, we're just going, going, going. All right, I'm dealing with meta and the backdoor spike. And I feel like deep down, I want the things and I feel like I have to do it. I dread it and I feel completely hopeless. You're not alone. 
I really hope you have a community. I really hope that you join, you know, no CD or that you join possibly an OCD support group because you are not alone in feeling dread and hopelessness. And I want you to push through and continue to seek support and not give up because you can do this. And I have so much hope for you because I have seen people find freedom from their OCD. And so if you don't have hope right now, that is okay because I will be holding that hope for you when you don't have it. And I know that it feels like you have to do these things. And again, just because it feels like it doesn't mean it's real. Okay. Um, I, I would love to ask you guys who relates who relates to Amela? Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, but who relates? Because I don't want you to feel alone right now. If any of you have ever felt dread or hopeless, or even just like you have to do this, this compulsion, please just like say like, I relate to Amela. I'm going to go down. Well, there's a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to just share that you relate, I would love you to post that in the comments. Oh, good. Box of Wine says I do. And I'm sure a lot more will come. I'd love to, I know that you guys can't join me in this, but through the comments you can. And so thank you, Box of Wine, and, you know, for sharing that. Okay. What, let's see. Um, what conditions are often misdiagnosed OCD or OCPD? So I don't want to, um, if this is a, um, a mental compulsion, you're trying to figure something out or get reassurance, I don't really want to do that. Um, and so what I am going to say is if you have a therapist or a psychiatrist, I would like you to ask them this question and they will answer it for you if they feel that is helpful. Um, unfortunately, people are misdiagnosed all the time before they get the right diagnosis of OCD. Um, what I can say is just a couple, um, you know, people can misdiagnose OCD for anxiety, for depression, for, um, I even, um, I schizophrenia. There's like so many things that people will get misdiagnosed for. Um, if, if this is a personal question and you're curious about your diagnosis, please do not try to self-diagnose. Please see a professional. Okay. Oh, great. There's more people sharing. They relate. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing how you relate to Amela. And again, I'm, I apologize if you're saying your name wrong. Crystal Carlette says I do. Daira, again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing any names, says I do relate. Sophia says I relate to that too. Ted says I relate. Akaidi says I do. Toothpaste says I relate. Joey says I relate. Nicole says I relate. High five six nine nine says I can relate. Janine Harrison says I relate. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that because you none of you are alone in this. Let's see. How do I see? Ooh, how do I seize the need to figure out the should of life choices? So there's a few things that you could try doing. One is awareness, just being aware of, okay, I notice I'm trying to figure something out. And once you, once you notice, oh, I'm trying to figure something out, that's when you can say, I'm going to shift my attention. I'm going to acknowledge that I'm trying to figure it out. I have a compulsion. What would I be doing right now if I wasn't obsessing? What would someone without OCD be doing right now? What would I be doing if this wasn't on my mind. What are my values? And then shifting to that. Another thing is, you know, anytime I hear the word should, I think shoulda, coulda, woulda. Any should, could, would, a lot of times are very self-deprecating. So anytime there's a should, you can also become aware and remind yourself, should is self-deprecating. What's a different way that I can, um, what's a different way I can reframe this sentence? But I love that you say figure it out because faith is a component. Um, and so I'm glad that you want to see that need. Okay. It might also be really hard to get out of your head. So it might have to be one of those things where you're like, wow, I'm going to really be thinking about this all day long. It's really going to be unfortunate. 
And at the same time, I'm not going to fight it because that will actually make it make it worse. All righty. Oh, I'm glad Amela saw that. Uh, all right. What do you, let's see. What do you do to treat OCD themes that are really sticking, like an underlying fear that's hard to accept? Would you combine another type of therapy with ERP? Last part, Ariel, what would you combine with ERP? So along with exposure response prevention is a great model called ACT, acceptance, it's a type of therapy, acceptance commitment therapy. And a lot of professionals will use ACT with ERP because acceptance commitment therapy or ACT is all about mindfulness and acceptance skills. And so when things are really sticking, sometimes when we try to fight that, it gets stronger. So think, I shared this before, but think about a beach ball. And when you try to push the beach ball underwater and you try to hold it there, it gets really, really difficult. And then as soon as you let go, it like flies up. And that's because you're resisting. So you might have to accept that there's some really sticky thoughts and acknowledge them and kind of externalize your OCD and be like, hey, OCD, I hear you. I hear that I can't get rid of these thoughts and I can't stop believing them. And I also know that it's you, OCD. So I'm going to have these thoughts and I'm going to feel this way and do whatever I was going to do today. So try not to get rid of them. Try to kind of be like, a like kind of, extinguishing a bully, right? I hear you and I'm not going to let it bother me or I hear you and it bothers me, but I'm still going to, I'm still going to do whatever I was going to do with my day today. Let's see. Let's see. Why is life hard? I know life is especially hard right now. You know, I actually heard a really good, I think it must, I don't even listen to podcasts a lot, but it must've been a podcast. And someone was explaining that, oh, I wish I could remember. I was I'm probably gonna totally mess this up, but someone was explaining how a lot of times we assume that life should be easy and that when difficult things happen, it's like, why is this happening? Like, um, this shouldn't be happening, but that is assuming that life is supposed to be easy. Um, so what I'm basically, I guess, saying is, unfortunately, life is hard. And I think, I think life isn't meant to be easy. And I think life is hard, which means we also need to encourage ourselves to have a ton of self-compassion because nobody's perfect and life is hard. And so it's okay if you're struggling, it's okay if you're not always doing the right thing or doing the best because it is hard. I hope that, I hope that was helpful. I really wish I could remember who was, who was explaining this. Oh, Nicole, you asked a good one. And I talked to um, a client today recently about this. How could we deal with uncertainty relating to the pandemic and COVID? It has been messing with me so much. So it almost doesn't matter what your theme is, right? Um, this pandemic and COVID, we do not have control, right? Like people that are in school, they might find out last minute that school is being postponed or they're not going to be in person or this is changing. So all over the world, everyone is being forced to deal with a lack of control. And so it's difficult and it's not going to just shift and become easy. I think it's going to make everyone better, right? At flexibility and accepting change and accepting a lack of control. It's kind of forcing us. It's like forcing exposure on us. And so one way to deal with the uncertainty is to try to see it that way. This, this will eventually benefit me that I'm being forced to be in, to sit with uncertainty and not know what's going on. And another way to deal with it is to basically do whatever you can that, 
do whatever what is within your control. Now, when it comes to OCD and some of this COVID stuff, it's really good if you're curious, like, what is my OCD? What is COVID? It, you know, what we've been saying, what professionals have been saying from the beginning is follow the CDC guidelines and anything more than that, you can just kind of say it's your OCD. So that, so it's basically challenging yourself to follow the OC, the CDC guidelines and not more than that. Um, I feel for you, Nicole, and a lot of people because you're not alone. I think it's messing with so many people and not just people with OCD. This is a really hard time. Even if you, you know, aren't thinking about it all the time, this, this is a pandemic that none of us, none of us have been through before. And it makes sense if our best right now is a little bit different than what our best sometimes is pre-pandemic. So self-compassion and patience with yourself and soothing techniques, ground yourself, try to try to focus on the present when you're worrying about the future and so on. Um, let's see, Collins, I'm on medication but have had a sudden bout with intrusive thoughts and anxiety because the medication has stopped working. So I'm a therapist, I'm not a psychiatrist, so it is out of my scope. And so where I could share my anecdotal thoughts, um, I would love to just refer you back to your psychiatrist to whoever prescribed the medication. I do not want to give you misinformation. And so I, I really encourage you to check it out with your psychiatrist. I'm glad you brought this up though, because any of you that can relate, um, it's so important that you do get these answers and that you check in with your professionals. All right. Okay, uh, Leo 70 TS, I think it is, or Leo 70. Hi, I'm 17 in my senior year of high school, congrats. And OCD has made the last six months quite miserable, even though there has definitely been some good days. I wanted to ask how effective is ERP for teens? Oh my goodness. I feel like you're just leading me to um, promoting how amazing ERP is. ERP is effective at any age. Okay, so if you're uncertain, try it. The worst that can happen is not even that you really get worse. The worst that is that could happen is that you don't really get the freedom. But I strongly encourage you to try it. Make sure that whoever you go to has specialization and has had training in ERP because you also don't want to go to someone who you think has the right training or like says they do ERP and they really don't because then you're going to get a poor experience of ERP and I don't want that to get in the way of you getting the right help. Okay. Um, so exposure response prevention is the gold standard care for OCD. It is in the research. It is the best thing that works for treating OCD. I want you to have a better end of your senior year. And so if you have the opportunity to, to get some ERP treatment, please do it. It is so effective and it, it doesn't take, it doesn't take as long as you would think. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, This is interesting. What if you act on a compulsion, an example, self-harm? What does that say about the patient? I would have to know the patient's, um, I, would, I, I can't really answer that. This isn't therapy and I don't know this, this client. And so I would really need to know their history without knowing anything though. Anytime someone acts on a compulsion, I think it really just shows that they're having a difficult time. I think Anytime someone acts on a compulsion, judgment isn't really helpful. And so I come from a place of non-judgment and, and instead curiosity. So anytime someone has a compulsion, I look at it as information for both of us. Okay. It also, recovery is not linear. It is not a straight line. And so it's very up and down. So just because you act on a compulsion also doesn't mean that it's all or nothing, you messed up, you're never going to get better. 
um, you're starting from scratch because that is not true. So some people struggle with compulsions forever and success is, is accepting when they happen and not beating yourself up and then continuing to do the work to try to reduce them. Okay. Um, I hope that answered just knowing that I would need to know more about this patient um, in particular. Um, let's see. Nick, I'm about to marry my fiance from Brazil, but I saw someone I thought was attractive as well. And it made me scared that my feelings for my wife will change or go away. What can I do to work on this? So Nick, I would love to, I would like to know more information. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that because you're on here right now that you possibly struggle with OCD and um, our OCD relationship OCD is a theme. Um, and I want you to notice is the attraction, are you thinking that it is wrong to be attracted to another person? Um, and if so, um, I'm trying to think how to answer this for you. So relationship OCD tends to sound like many different things, but part of it can be thinking that something you're doing is making you not a good partner. And so I'm wondering if that's what's going on is you think that you're not going to be a good person to her because you have an attraction to someone else. Just because you're attracted to somebody else does not mean that you want to be with someone else or that you're not going to be good to your wife. It's the behaviors that are the problem. So if you think someone's attractive, that is human. If you do something because you think they're attractive, like seek them out, um, then that behavior is one that is not going to be helpful for your relationship. Um, so I think seek out a professional to talk to about possible relationship OCD um, and also trying to acknowledge that if I rationally love who I'm about to marry and I don't like this thought and I love this person, that maybe it may be your OCD trying to get in the way of your relationship. And it's really important you get help, or like possibly get help if you can, because sometimes our OCD can get in the way of relationships. A lot of people will feel like they have to tell their significant person everything. And if they don't have understanding of our OCD or OCD, it could really get in the way of the relationship. So I wanna make sure that you get support, um, support on this, okay? Um, also said, since I saw that person, I have felt guilty and empty inside and I'm worried the spark won't come back. So again, this feeling you have about being attracted to somebody else, it again, everyone's different. It could be a cultural thing. It could be a belief system that you have that, that it's wrong to be attracted to anyone except for the person you're with. But that's not always that's not always rational because you can't help who you're attracted to. Just because you find someone attractive does not mean that you should or shouldn't be with this person that you're with. Being attracted to someone is not a behavior. It's okay. Um, all right. I do wish you the best of, of luck though. Um, toothpaste. This is a great question or comment. Is it question? Is it normal to feel like you're keeping a secret by not telling people your obsessions? Yes. It is really common, a really, really common compulsion for different people, not everyone, is this need to tell someone everything and to tell them your obsessions. And by telling them, that can be a compulsion. I understand that by not telling them, even though you feel like you should, probably feels like you're keeping a secret. And so it probably feels really uncomfortable. That uncomfort, that discomfort though, is what ERP would say that we want you to lean into. Um, telling someone everything also could be a form of reassurance seeking. So telling someone everything to then get the response that's like, you're fine, it's okay, I don't care, it's your OCD. So also telling someone everything could be reassurance seeking, which isn't helpful for your OCD. I, I get that though, I get that like, 
if you have this belief that you should be telling your best friend or your partner or something, everything, I get where it would feel uncomfortable, but sometimes that is enabling your OCD. I have contamination OCD and will start ERP soon. Congratulations for starting ERP soon. Will my theme jump quick? So part of what you'll learn with ERP is it's not helpful to get reassurance. And so I, and honestly, I really don't know. It's different for everyone. So I can't tell you. So unfortunately, you're going to have to sit with the uncertainty of how your OCD is going to play out. But when you start EOP, ERP and you kind of learn about OCD and you get all that psychoeducation and you start doing that work, um, you will get more of an understanding why, uh, why nobody can really answer this for you. Um, I think it's good that you know that it can jump and that you can have different themes pop up. It's good that you know that because some people who aren't aware of that, they will work on ERP for one theme. And then when another one comes up, they get super uncomfortable and they aren't sure what's going on. And if you know that themes can switch, it's helpful to bring your awareness to like, oh, I know what this is. This is another OCD thing. It's just another theme. It's just, you know, it's OCD dressed in a different, in a different way. Um, let's see. What is the time period between deciding to engage with a OCD thought? Kristen, can you um, elaborate on this? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Crystal, is part of OCD taking on the emotional pain of others? Like if I watch a movie and someone has intense emotions in the movie, I start to feel that way. Is that part of OCD? So again, I don't know you on a personal level. I don't know your story. Um, however, from my own personal thought on this, that does not on its own necessarily have anything to do with OCD. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a diagnosis that has multiple criteria that a person has to meet in order to actually have the diagnosis of OCD. So just hearing this alone, I really can't find it. I, I really don't know the answer for you. Everyone's different. Um, but just on its own, that is not on its own OCD related. Um, it sounds like empathy, which is human and amazing. Um, so some of, a lot of this might just literally be that you are human and you have empathy and you feel for others and you can connect when others are experiencing something. Um, and a lot of people can relate, right? I'd love for you guys to share if you relate that just sometimes when you're watching something, you can feel that emotion that's going on in the show. And I think a lot of us experience this in some form, which is why we watch because it brings up emotions for us. Um... Christy, I know. I hate when I see it in which my brain worked more normally. I know. I think that people with OCD are some of the toughest people because every day you're battling discomfort and intrusive thoughts and obsessions and just you're fighting with this thing inside of you. Um, and no one deserves it. It's kind of like we assume life should be easy, just like we assume no one should struggle. And I wish that were the truth. And I, I wish for you that you can find more freedom. And I don't really like the, the term normal, right? I mean, I don't, no one, no one is normal. Um, I think that's subjective. Just because you have OCD does not mean that you are not like others if that's what you're wanting to be. I'm glad you guys are relating. I know I'm missing some, some Nick uh, relates to Peter. I'm not sure who Peter is. So I'm glad you guys are responding to each other since I can't get to everyone. Um, let's see. I'm so afraid to leave my phone at the desk at work. I feel like someone might check my phone and see some staff that I don't want to see anyone 
and I start having urges to check CCTV or ask people. Sorry, I don't know if I um, understand this. I'm afraid to leave my phone at the desk at work. I feel like someone might check my phone. Oh, and see some stuff that I don't want anyone to see. Um, I'm not sure I understand exactly, but it sounds like you may not want to have stuff on your phone that you don't want other people seeing if it's easy to get into your phone, if like you don't have a password or something, but I'm not sure I totally understand. Oh no, Chrissy, people should not be ashamed of the diagnosis. I can't control your feelings. I can't control if someone has shame or feels shame. However, you cannot control that you have OCD or not. You And so here's the difference between shame and guilt. Shame is um, about being a bad, wrong person. Guilt is more about behaviors. So shame can be a lot more harmful to yourself than guilt. Again, not that I can control and take away your guilt and shame. I wish I could. But sometimes people don't know the difference. And it can help you shift your, your shame either away or to guilt or to something else to know that shame is encompasses your whole being versus guilt, which is acknowledging that maybe you did something that isn't right. So, so guilt says, oh man, I, I didn't study for that test and I really did poorly. I feel guilty. Shame is I didn't do well on that test. I am a bad person. What is wrong with me? Okay. So shame is a feeling about yourself as a whole person, which is really, um, a tougher feeling than guilt. Guilt, not, you know, guilt is more about behaviors. I hope that answers your question, but I do not want you to be ashamed of your diagnosis. We all have our stuff. We all have different things we struggle with. And OCD also really, I've never met someone with OCD that isn't an amazing human and has amazing characteristics. Um, so I definitely don't want you to feel ashamed. I would love for you to really join um, OCD communities because joining a com this community will help probably reduce some of that shame because you will meet so many people with OCD um, that are amazing people. And the OCD community is awesome. Everyone is so kind and helpful and supportive and fun. Um, so there's that. All right, how can I join a community? Great question. So there's a few ways. So you can look on um, NoCD. They, NoCD has a, a great big community and they have therapy, they have groups. I think they, they have these meetings. They have a lot of talks that come up. So if you are, um, if you have a correlation or if you are connected, sorry, with, with NoCD, ask them about like, how can I get more involved in the community? Another way is if you go to IOCDF, I think it's .com, let me check really quick. Uh, let's see, IOCDF.com, org, IOCDF.org. There are a ton of resources on there um, and information about OCD. Um, it de depending on where you live also, like I'm in California, there's OCD SoCal, which is like another organization. Um, so I wish you luck because I really want you to, to do that. So look up some, look up groups. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know your name, but um, sh sh they shared a little bit more. I have a password on my phone, but this thought feels so real that people might hack my phone or my laptop. I know it sounds ridiculous, but these thoughts sometimes drive me crazy. So if this is kind of like related to OCD or even, even just anxiety, if there's nothing, I mean, it, de it depends what you're trying to hide. Um, but I wonder what would happen if you kind of sat with yeah, someone might hack my phone. And then what, what are you so afraid of with them hacking your phone and kind of 
working out those questions and continue. It's called downward spiral or downward question technique where you keep asking yourself, why? Why am I afraid of this? And then you have an answer like, I don't know, I don't want them to know my personal information. Okay, but why? And you answer that question, but why? And that kind of helps you get to more of like the, your core fear. Yes, yes, Taylor. Is it common to feel like an imposter? Like I don't actually have OCD. Yes, another common um, idea or um, obsession that people have is like, do I have OCD or not? So hopefully I can give you reassurance, but you're not alone that people will question their own diagnosis. Let's see. Um, I'm, let's see if I should go back. Let's go back a little bit. Um, how can we better manage, let's see, time when OCD strikes? How can we better manage time? I think this is using your tools that you will learn um, in ERP. So um, awareness is like always going to be an amazing thing to work on, like noticing when your OCD strikes and catching it like, aha, there you are. I'm not going to let you freak me out. I'm not going to let you scare me. Or even if you do scare me, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, you can do homework, you can do um, imagined exposures, which is where you kind of write out as if your fear is happening to help get used to that fear that you're you're kind of avoiding um, or the discomfort you're avoiding. Um, so yeah, psycho ed, learning about OCD is gonna help you manage your time better when it comes up. Because when you know more about it, even knowing more about it helps lessen um, the the reaction like the fear that comes up let's see joey i listened to this song and it mentioned the devil on it and out of nowhere i got this thought saying kneel down or something bad will happen what should i do well if you are asking this because you struggle with ocd you hear the word devil and you don't kneel down and you just sit with the fact that maybe or maybe not something will happen. A really great way to respond to your is by sitting with uncertainty. So even saying out loud or saying to your OCD, I don't know, I don't know the answer. Maybe this thing is gonna happen and maybe it won't. I'm not gonna do anything and we're just gonna find out and I'm gonna sit with the unknown. Let's see. Go back down. So many great questions. I'm so sorry if I don't get to all of them. Um, let's see. Um, how can I, Crypto Bunker says, how can I deal with the thought of not being able to sleep? A thought of time I will manifest, a lot of time will manifest it to happen if I have a big event the next day. What would be exposure for that? How can I deal with the thought of not being able to sleep? So I'm going to explain what I think I'm hearing so that you know what I'm answering to. If you have a, a repetitive thought that's like, what if I can't sleep tonight? What if I can't sleep tonight? What if I can't sleep tonight? Um, a great response is, you're right, maybe I won't sleep tonight. Maybe I'll get horrible sleep tonight. Maybe I won't be able to sleep for days. And sitting with the discomfort that comes up from that that idea that you're not going to be able to sleep. Um, I, along with a lot of other ERP therapists, do not believe in manifestation because manifestation is similar to this idea of thought action fusion, that if we think something, that something will actually happen and that's not true. And so you can't, so I do not believe that you can manifest something to happen. If you wish for a million dollars every single day of your life, that does not mean you're going to get a million dollars. You can work towards it and you could do things to get you closer to it maybe and work really hard and all that stuff. But, but just thinking something does not mean that it's going to happen. Just because you may not sleep well doesn't mean that you made yourself not sleep well. 
you may be doing things that contribute to lack of sleep. And there's so many things uh, that can interfere with sleep. So I would look up sleep hygiene, like what are good things to make sure you have good sleep hygiene. Um, the other thing is a lot of times if you have a big event, there's some stress and anxiety that increase with like a big event coming the next day, like a lot of either excitement or anxiety or nerves. That doesn't mean that you manifested yourself to not sleep well. That means that you are nervous and excited about this event and that is causing you anxiety. And sometimes it's hard to sleep when we have a lot of anxiety. So exposure would be sitting with the thought that you might not get sleep. I've had people that are really afraid of not getting adequate sleep because they're afraid of like not being able to handle the day, not being able to get through a day tired. They're afraid their brain will break, all these different things. And so sometimes exposure for them is purposely not getting good sleep, purposely staying up all night, purposely drinking coffee and not being able to sleep. So they have to feel what it feels like to not sleep well. Now, I'm not saying go do this before a big event on purpose, um, but there are, you're not alone in this fear of like, I don't know how I can survive without sleep and being afraid of what it's like to not have sleep. So sometimes exposure is not having a lot of sleep and, and seeing what happens. <sighs> oh, Chrissy, no. My previous manager told me my fear of getting fired caused me to get fired. No. Um, what I will say about this is I don't believe that a thought can make something happen. However, sometimes we, there's this thing, self-fulfilling prophecy, where we have such a fear or belief about ourselves that we unfortunately will do things to confirm this belief. Not that I'm saying that for sure happened. Um, but as our worry can, can get in the way and then cause us to maybe do things that, you know, aren't helpful. Shaned or Shane DJ. Sorry, I don't know where I got Shaned, but Shane DJ, I have a fear of deadly of a deadly disease, brain eating amoeba. I am sorry that you have this fear. I'm not sure other context, but thank you for sharing your fear. Sometimes just sharing our fear can be empowering. Um, what I say about like anything medical related is ruling out medical one time. So if you're afraid of a certain disease or like that you have it or something like that and you have never got a check before ever, checking once, getting your answer and not checking again because then that would be a compulsion. Um, good to know you can't manifest things that helps to have that mindset. So I don't necessarily want you to use that as a lot of reassurance. Like I can't manifest, I can't manifest, but I just want you to have that knowledge and that awareness um, and the type that you can name it thought action fusion. And that, that is when you have a thought and you believe that a thought can make something happen. Um, and a lot of people struggle with this theme of if I don't do X, Y, and Z, something bad will happen. But it's really about that fear of like, what if something bad does happen? What, why does that matter? What is that fear? I've been diagnosed with OCD, but then with GAD since I only avoid exposures. My symptoms started after a job in um, a medical field where I got traumatized by what I saw. How can I differentiate them? I think what you're saying is you've been diagnosed with both. Avoidance can be seen at, as a compulsion. So there's different types of compulsions. There's behavioral compulsions, there's mental compulsions, there's compulsions as avoidance. And I think there's one that I'm missing that's off the top of my head. Um, behavioral, mental, avoidance and reassurance seeking are all compulsions. Um, so avoiding exposures can be a compulsion. Um, the great thing is that you can also treat generalized anxiety with some ERP. So it's not necessarily, uh, I don't want to say it's not going to hurt you. 
because I don't know everyone's story and I don't want to give out wrong information because all of you are individuals and this is not therapy. So I would talk to whoever diagnosed you. I would talk to your therapist. Um, that can be treated differently. So OCD, it's not helpful to challenge your thinking, where sometimes with generalized anxiety, that type of CBT where you challenge your thinking and your and your perception can help, but not with OCD. Because with OCD, that can get you into like ruminating, which is a compulsion. Hmm. Kristen, is there a time period to make sure an OCD thought does not get stuck? I wish all of you could control your thoughts and that you could time out when your OCD comes and goes, but unfortunately you can't. And so there isn't, a, there isn't a time period to make sure it doesn't get stuck. Um, if, 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 if that were true, then we wouldn't be struggling if we could control it. So unfortunately you're not going to you can't time out when these things are going to happen. What I can tell you, though, is when there's more stress in your life, sometimes that is when OCD can, can get louder. So there are things that exacerbate and can make the OCD come up or make the OCD louder or make it more sticky. Um, so treating yourself well, trying not to live a stressful lifestyle, which can be impossible for some. But really, the answer is you can't really... Um, can't really like plan that. You can though um, foresee an OC um, getting louder, like knowing you're going through a lot of stress or knowing a stressful situation is gonna happen, being able to notice that and be like, oh, I bet my OCD is gonna get fired up soon because I know that I'm really stressed. So you could you can like become aware, like you can know when it's gonna get louder. Um, how do you get help if you are undiagnosed? Patient is scared to be around groups of people due to harm OCD and being around them as a trigger. If you're undiagnosed, you can still get help. You don't have to have the diagnosis to get, to, to get help or get better. Um, it would be great if you could get an assessment done you could have an OCD, you could go see a psychiatrist, you could see a therapist who specializes in OCD. You can look up on OCD and you can also look up on the IOCDF website for a provider in your area. Um, psychoeducation might be helpful so that this person can get to a point where they feel safe enough to see a professional. Um, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen the show Pure on HBO Max, but Pure is a TV show that really, really does a good job of kind of showing what OCD is like for some people. I don't think harm OCD is in there, um, but it helps kind of really, it's like the only thing I've seen that really kind of shares a good demonstration of, of OCD. Um, so yeah, but I hope that that person can get some education on OCD so they can realize like, okay, harm OCD is a theme and other people have it. And it doesn't mean I'm going to act on it because people with OCD are probably the least likely to do these things. So if you are freaked out by your intrusive thoughts and your thoughts cause distress, that means that you do not like the thoughts, which means that it is ego dystonic which means it's against your values, which means it's more likely OCD than not OCD. So if someone had harmful thoughts and they liked the thoughts, they liked that they thought about harming someone, that may not be OCD because that's ego syntonic, that it, it um, is in line with your beliefs. So you also wanna make sure that um, these, these intrusive thoughts are, um, or, you know, it, clearly this person is afraid to be around people. So that means that they do not like these thoughts. Um, but yes, ch you can also, if they're afraid to actually see someone, um, Kimberly Quinlan has something called ERP school. You can go to like erpschool.com and you can buy the program and do ERP yourself. It's helpful to have someone else with you, but that is like a good start. Um, or you can get a ERP workbook. Um, 
Kimberly Quillen also has an ERP workbook, as well as like John Hirschfield and many other people, but I can't think of their names off the top of my head. Um, all right, so I am so sorry that I can't get to everyone's questions. I just noticed the time. We're almost at the hour, and so I'm gonna have to pause here. I hope I was able to help, even if I didn't answer your specific question, I hope that I was able to like help in some way with all of you. Um, again, please continue to come to these. Check out OCD if you need support. Um, I, I um, I'm a therapist in California. I can treat people in California only. Um, if you're needing, you know, if you're wanting to ask me questions or just looking for more people on Instagram that have some OCD content, um, you can find me there. My um, Instagram is Jackie Shape and Therapy. So it's my name and then therapy. So, um, and then I also follow a lot of count, accounts that have great info on OCD. So if looking up OCD info is not a compulsion for you, then that is an option for you. Um, so you can find me there. So thank you again. Hopefully I'll be back. Um, and oh, someone just watched Peer yesterday. Yes. Oh, good. Someone was led to know CD by Google. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, if you can't afford therapy, check out ERP school. Okay. Also, you can check out um, OCD workbooks, but ERP school is really good. So let her know. Asensia. She's amazing. She's another person to follow. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And hopefully I will see you here again, or I'll see you somewhere on social media. Okay. Bye.